I've often said that YouTube, like many other popular websites, is largely fueled by anger. In the modern era on social media, folks have this tendency to find the silliest situations or affairs to become upset about, and the initial outrage concerning this film, Sonic the Hedgehog, is no exception. So the original character design was terrible, just awful, and not at all like the character from the video games. But that's not what interested me about this affair. What was interesting to me about all the outrage that happened as a result of this character design was that I noticed that the folks at Paramount were made to perk up and actually listen to their audience and admit that they were right. I thought it was great. You know, I had a little bit of my concerns, uh, my own concerns, and, uh, you know, people jumped right in there and uh, they will not be ignored. <laughs> and that's the new world, you know? The entire situation made me think that there's this curtain, so to speak, dividing big-name corporations from the folks consuming their products. The folks running these corporations don't react or pay attention unless a social media populace speaks up or unless millions of people press a downvote button on YouTube. This is becoming well-recognized in the video game industry as well, particularly concerning companies like Bethesda or Blizzard Entertainment. However, as we know, Paramount redesigned the character of Sonic and surprised a great many people, including myself. I was not expecting that. But I was expecting not to expect something, so it doesn't count. Now, I grew up with Nintendo, so my knowledge of Sonic the Hedgehog has been limited. Generally speaking, I recognize him as being a mascot for Sega, and that he was a character in a game named after him, made for the Sega Genesis. More particularly, I knew Sonic was a speedster, rolling up into a ball and blasting around the Green Hill Zone. And I also know that he has a friend named Tails, who can fly like a helicopter. But aside from that, most of my knowledge about the Sonic franchise is peripheral. But of note concerning my limited investment, is that I at least knew what the character looked like, and so could easily assess that making a character in a film who lacked resemblance to a character in the game would not go over well for fans of the franchise. Now from what I've gathered, one of the film's animators, a Max Schneider, says that Paramount Pictures actually expected that Sonic fans would object to the redesign, but that general audiences would not care. I'm not exactly sure who general audiences are in this case, but for the sake of this review, let's just assume he's referring to me. I can say that without a doubt, I actually did care, if only because even as a general audience member, I also know that the fans care. And so my mindset was basically this, if you're assuming general audiences don't care, then why not just do what the fans want anyway? Regardless, Paramount heard the outcry and changed the character's design, and good on them for doing that. And I was genuinely taken aback when I saw the second trailer for the film show up on YouTube, and I said to myself, wait, did they change it? And lo and behold, I discovered that they did change it. And if I, a general audience member, was pleasantly surprised about this, then I can't imagine how the fans must have felt about it. And at that point, I decided I would go see it, in theaters. Mind you, I probably only go to the theaters about once a year, and that's because most movies nowadays aren't worthwhile enough to warrant paying a movie ticket for. But was this movie worth it? Yes. I can say without a doubt, as a general audience member, that Sonic the Hedgehog was thoroughly enjoyable and entertaining. But I was expecting not to expect something, so it doesn't count. I would say the only part of the movie I was really at odds with was the beginning of it, funnily enough. You see, at first I'd assume the writers were going to try to make the story unnecessarily complicated, adding chunks of lore to the scenery, rather than simply have the story unfold naturally. However, I was then relieved to discover that the movie just wasn't going to take itself so seriously. Now, it was around the time Dr. Robotnik was introduced was where I really just settled in and decided to have a good time. Jim Carrey was phenomenal in that role. There I was expecting him to play Robotnik in a manner similar to roles he played in Ace Ventura, Me, Myself, and Irene, or The Mask. But as Robotnik, Carrie managed to play a character who was ridiculously over the top, and yet not excessively so. In fact, as far as the entire film is concerned, there was a certain level of comedic ridiculousness to it all, and yet the movie didn't go overboard with it. Now, if I had any problems with the film, those would be relegated to the brevity about which all the events occur. The friendship between Sonic and Tom Wachowski, for instance, happens over a very short time span. And note, this isn't due any lack of quality in the film itself, as it had about a 90-minute running time. Unlike a television series where one has multiple opportunities for story breadth, I'm not sure what else could have been done to accentuate the relationship between Sonic and Tom, other than to cut some other scenes out. But in hindsight, I don't believe there were any scenes that were particularly irrelevant or unnecessary. Well, that's not entirely true. The only two scenes I felt were really awkwardly implemented were the ones from the trailer. 
I'm talking specifically about Sonic's quick visit to the world's largest rubber band ball, in addition to the scene where Robotnik receives a latte from Agent Stone. In the film, both of those situations feel strange and out of place, as if they were tailored exclusively to be put within a trailer. And given an interview I'd seen with Jim Carrey about his playing Robotnik, I'd also been led to believe that the whole latte thing was going to be a running gag throughout the movie. And, you know, another thing he really, really wants is to be able to get a latte the way he wants it. With Austrian goat's milk. Thankfully, it was not, and I think Robotnik as a character fares far better for that. Nevertheless, there were multiple scenes where James Marsden, as Tom Wachowski, interacts with someone who is essentially a CGI character, and it does so in a manner that makes the CGI character feel organic and real, and that was wonderful. All right, get in the truck. Really? You're gonna help me? I guess it is a little bit my fault that all this is happening to you. Not a little bit, entirely. It is entirely your okay, fault. it's entirely my fault. Are you coming? Yes. Road trip! Whoop, whoop. What am I doing? Now, the last thing I will say here is that the movie does set itself up for a sequel, and does so in a manner that also took me by surprise. But while I enjoyed this film, I can't see a sequel as being as good as it was, and so I'm not left holding my breath for another. Now, so as not to get into any spoilers here, I won't go into the details as to why I don't think a sequel would work, but I'll probably make another video exploring my thoughts as to why. Ultimately, however, this movie was great fun, and I recommend it even if you're not a fan and you're like me, a member of this so-called general audience. <laughs> and that's the new world, you know?